Hello, my name is David. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to install one of our ES335 pre-wired assemblies into an overseas 335 copy. As you can see, our 335 assembly uses the highest quality parts available. We're using all 10% tolerance potentiometers. We're using switchcraft switches and jacks. And we're using our very own vitamin T oil-filled capacitors. Uh, the overseas copies generally are very well-made guitars, but they're lacking in the quality of the electronics. So we're going to improve that with our 335 assembly here. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the pick guard out of the way so that we don't risk damaging anything and we've got more room to install the assembly. By removing the screw out of the side first, off of the bracket, and then out of the top, and then putting the pick guard aside. Now we have a nice open face to work with. Now we can proceed to remove the old electronics out of the guitar. Start by wrapping a cloth around the bottom of the knobs, like so, very securely, and pulling the knobs off, simply. And we'll follow the same step with the rest of it. Now we have the switch tip and the knobs removed. We can go ahead and remove the nuts and washers to take out the old assembly. Now that we've got the old electronics removed from the guitar, you can see that these are just cheap pots, cheap switch, and a cheap jack. It looks like a rat's nest. We're going to be replacing it with this. You can see there's a huge difference in quality. Okay, I've removed the pickups from the old assembly and also the ground wire to the bridge. Everything is prepared for the new assembly to drop in. Now that we've got everything removed from the guitar, I'm going to go ahead and use a stepped drill bit to enlarge the holes for the uh, USA threaded shafts. Going from metric to standard requires you to enlarge the holes to a 3 8 inch hole. This is the step drill bit. It starts a nice clean hole and then you follow it up with a regular 3 8 drill bit. Now that we've enlarged the holes, we're going to vacuum out the inside of the guitar, get all the wood chips out of there. Here I have a makeshift vacuum attachment, just a piece of scrap tubing taped to the vacuum so that we can get inside the F-hole and vacuum out all the wood chips very clean and easy. Next step is to take the pre-wired assembly off of the board. Start with removing the nuts and the washers and putting them aside. Okay, the nuts and the washers have been removed. We can just simply push the assembly out of the board. Take your hands on both ends and push against the table and everything pops right out nice and clean without bending anything. Now we have the assembly on the guitar, on a cloth of course, to protect the guitar. We're going to take approximately one foot long pieces of string and tie it around the bottom of the shaft of the pots. Just tie a single knot. Make sure it's tight so that when you're pulling it through it doesn't come off on you. Now I have all the strings tied to each potentiometer, the switch and the jack. I used one of the old washers from the cheap pot to use as a device to pull the jack through. All right, now we're going to solder the pickups and the ground wire to the new assembly. It's always a good idea to, to label your neck and bridge pickup. Just a simple piece of masking tape, an N for neck, a B for bridge. This way you don't get them backwards when you're installing them. Okay, we're going to go ahead and install the assembly, assembly through the F hole here. Some guitars you can install it through the bridge pickup cavity, not this guitar. We have to go through the F hole. You have to make sure the F hole is at least one inch wide or you may not be able to install the full size potentiometers. So we'll start with, you can see it's like a start to finish. We're going to start with the finish and go in and just be very careful not to, to bend anything. We have the assembly inside the guitar. I tried to kind of line the pots up and the jack and the switch up with the holes and I just took a paper clip, a full size paper clip, bent a little hook on one end and then had an end to hold on to and this I'll go in and fish for the strings. I'm going to use the strings and try to use my finger or anything I can to kind of help guide the pots through the holes and then pull them up through into place. The 3 8 holes are nice and tight, not real tight, but tight enough to where when you pull it through it'll stay in place. Now we've got everything through the holes. We can go ahead and install the nuts and washers back onto the jack and the switch and the pots. Just slide it over the string 
it'll fall right onto place. And then use the string to kind of hold everything as you tighten down the, uh, the nut here. Okay, now I'm just gonna tighten everything down snug. You don't wanna crank real tight, you just wanna make it snug. Once you've installed the assembly, you will have to change out the knobs and the switch tip because these are USA fine knurled shafts versus the coarse knurled that you find on all the uh, less expensive potentiometers. Now that I have the knobs, the switch tip on, I can install the pick guard back on the guitar. That's it, we're finished here. Uh, the main thing you wanna keep in mind is, is that you still have to have some basic soldering skills, um, some basic electronic skills to be able to do this. This is still not easy as it looks. Um, the final results will certainly give you much more reliable electronics and of course better tapers on the pots and everything else. So enjoy your mojo tone.